the first thing that we see, we see that we have a ton. So what did I say about 10? If we have 10, we are going to change it. It's an identity. No? So we do have an identity of 10. It says 10 can be written as sine theta all over what? All over cos theta. So what does that mean? It means which everywhere we see 10, we can put it as what? As sine theta all over cos theta. Okay, let's go and do that then. So we'll come and say, okay, we have... Instead of tan theta here, what am I going to put? So I'm going to put sine theta all over cos theta. There's a multiplication again. Now let's continue with the red color to represent that we are continuing with the question exactly the way it is. So here we'll have cos theta minus sine theta. Let's put it like this, all squared. Everyone is happy there, yeah? yeah. Now, what does this mean? If they didn't write anything here below cos, it means there's a one again. So here we also have a one. Yeah? Now, for us to do this one, we say numerator multiplied by numerator. Uh, denominator multiplied by what? By the denominator. What happens is that we see something here. There's a cos on the numerator again. There's a cos on the numerator, and then there's a cos on the one on the denominator. So these two things, they're going to divide each other out again. So if they divide each other out, what are we going to be left with here? We're going to be left with sine theta minus. So it's sine theta minus sine theta all squared. Okay. Now from here onwards, we can then say, is this the only thing that we have here? Now we can then factorize this. Okay? So we have two terms. This is term number one. Guys, you can take out something which is common if there's nothing common between the two factors. So this is term number one. This is term number two. Between these two things to check, is there anything that appears, that appears this side and then it also appears this side? Is there anything like that? Okay, what is that thing? So you have sine theta. If we take out sine theta here, what are we going to remain with here? So we have one minus, minus sine theta. It. I want to couple these two now so that we are done. Now let's look at this one. The last one, we have two terms. Can you see that? Number five, example number five. Now between these two terms, is there anything which is common? Nothing which is common. Okay? Now before sometimes we go and change, we could change one because we know which one can be written as cos squared, what, what. You remember that? Okay? But perhaps the, the first thing that we can try to check is that, is this a perfect square? Let's, let's go and check. We can write this as one all squared again. Okay? What is one all squared? It's one again. Okay? Minus cos theta all squared. Is this a perfect square? Is this a perfect square? Now, what do you have in between the two perfect squares? What do you call this in math? It's a minus, no? but what do we call a minus in the English? What do we call it? It's a different, again. Okay? So we have a different of two squares. So if you have a different of two squares, how do you factorize a different of two squares? You open two, two brackets, okay? Then you put, you put one here, no? you also put what? One here. And then what are we going to put here? Plus, and then here we're going to put what? A minus. And then here we're going to put root of this, again. Okay? So we have cos theta, and then here we're also going to have what? Cos theta. And then here we have our factors. So we can factorize by, so when we're dealing with two terms, we can factorize by taking out a common factor. If we can't take out a common factor, then we can factorize by different of two squares. Different of two squares, guys, it's similar to this thing here. We've done this. We have x squared, okay? Minus one. This, this x squared, it's a perfect square, okay, this thing. And then this is also what? A perfect square. So if you were to factorize this, Nothing has changed. So we are going to have what? X here again. Here we are going to have what? X. Here we are going to have plus. Here we are going to have minus. What do we put here? What do we put here? Now, we've also seen this when we're busy with um, exponents. So on exponents, let's say we have 2 to the power of 2x again. Yes. Minus 1. So if we have 2 to the power of 2x, we set in exponents, we can come and write this thing as 2 to the power of x or squared minus one again. Okay? Is this a perfect square? Is this a perfect square? 
So if this is a perfect square, then we'll open two brackets. So what do we have here? Two to the power of x. Here you have what? Two to the power of x. Here you have what? Minus one. Here you have what? Plus one. And then we can come and finish our activity. I think we're left with... Uh, We've done number three, ne? so we just have to come and do number four and number five, and then we should be done. Huh? Yes. Uh, 